everyone, this is a video tutorial to help you with E1 reactions. So first let's talk about the name. So the reason it's called an E1 reaction is because if you look at the rate law, it's unimolecular, which means it only depends on one reactant, in this case just the alkyl halide. To understand why that is, you need to take a look at the mechanism. So if you look at the mechanism right over here, you'll see that in the first step, all we have is our alkyl halide. There are a couple things about the alkyl halide you should know. First, the carbon that's attached to the halogen is called the alpha carbon. All carbons that are immediately adjacent to that alpha are called betas. Remember, in an overall elimination reaction, you lose the halogen and you also lose a hydrogen off of one of those beta carbons. Sometimes there is a preference for one over the other. In this case, I've made them all equivalent, so it doesn't matter which one we use as the beta carbon that loses the hydrogen. So now, in the very first step, with some facilitation from the solvent, our halogen group will leave, hence it's called the leaving group. Upon its departure, we will form a carbocation. So now, in this case, we have the carbocation. It's primed itself for a base, such as water, to come and attack that hydrogen. So on the oxygen, you have lone pairs. Those lone pairs will be used to pull off the hydrogen from this beta carbon. When this bond forms, this bond breaks between the carbon and the hydrogen, and those electrons are now transferred between both of those carbons, making sure everything still has its octet. After this has happened, there's your formation of your alkene, your kicked off bromine group, and now your protonated water. And that's what's happening in an E1 reaction.